Well, some good news for some ladies out there faking it in the what? bedroom may not spell disaster for your sex what life. What did you say? Faking it. A study in the Journal of Sex reveals that 67% of women admitted to occasionally, well, faking the big O with their partner. Scientists, yes, scientists say for some women pretending to... Uh, reach a climax can increase sexual satisfaction and heighten levels of arousal. That's how it turns out. So is faking it between the sheets good for us? Joining us now is Tracy Cox, uh, who is a sexologist and in currently in Melbourne for Sex Fire. Hi, Tracy. Hello, um, how are you? Why do women feel the need to pretend? Like, do we? Well, well, yes, I think we do. I think that men still expect that women, you know, should have an orgasm every single time. And I think women perpetuate the myth. I think that, you know, even though we, we've known for 2,000 years that women don't necessarily orgasm through penetration, only about 20% of women do, I think men, men still sort of expect that they do. And women learn very quickly that if you admit to not having an orgasm with, with a guy, especially a new partner, um, he often will say, well, you know, Susie didn't have a problem and the girl before that didn't have a problem because the, pre the girl previous to you has sometimes faked it. And you learn very quickly that if you want the guy to like you, then you'll fake it next time round to make him feel better about himself. Is Dr. Cox your real name or did you make that up? <laughs> it's definitely my real name. Fair I would enough. have been a little bit more inventive had I made yes, it up myself. Uh, what about men? Do they fake things like this too? Well, men can fake orgasm really? because, you know, if they, yeah, they do. And if they're tired or stressed, they sometimes do it to, you know, explain away, you know, an erection. And, I mean, women are even worse at except women get really upset if men don't have an orgasm because they tend to think that men's orgasms are sort of automatic and inevitable. And they can take it very personally if, if men don't have an orgasm. So, I mean, obviously, there would be no problem with faking. We wouldn't need to fake orgasms if there was no reason to, you know, pretend that we'd had one. And I'm over here, actually, with sex and doing lots of seminars to try and explain, you know, how to be sexually honest and open with your partner. So if you want to check that out, it's at the um, Melbourne Exhibition Centre. Um, starts at midday today and runs till Sunday. Sure. It, um, is faking good for a relationship? Like, should we fake it or shouldn't we fake it? Well, we obviously shouldn't fake it in the sense that, um, I mean, the worst possible time to fake an orgasm is, of course, at the beginning. And that's, of course, when everybody does it. Um, what happens in that, you know, if he's using an ineffectual technique and not making, you're not really arousing her or turning her on, she's pretending that it is. You're, you're setting yourselves up basically for a cycle of deception <laughs> and dishonesty. It's never going to get, <laughs> gonna get anywhere. And if you have been faking it for years, it's never too late to actually come clean and say, you know, and the way to do that is just to say, look, you know, Something's happened. I don't know what's happened. I used to be able to orgasm this way, but for some reason, all of a sudden, I'm not. And just, you know, explain then what you want. And again, you know, talk honestly with your partner. Yeah. Uh, do you think there's an expectation that couples uh, should orgasm during sex? Uh, I think that's a myth that is still alive and kicking out there, that there's meant to be an orgasm each for both of you. Um, of course, that isn't necessarily the case. I mean, only about 40% of women orgasm regularly with their partners. 87% of men think that they are orgasming with them. So you do the math. There is an awful lot of faking going on. And, mm -hmm. and again, you know, we need to be a little bit more honest about our needs. We're not, we're, we're not, you know, our sexuality isn't as simple as what we once thought, particularly women's sexuality is incredibly complicated. And um, this is why, you know, places like Sex are brilliant at challenging those myths because it, mm. it's not the norm for both of you to have an orgasm every single session and we need to be less orgasm mm. orientated. There was Maybe last about 10 to 30 seconds yeah. as it is. So. Less orgasm oriented. Like there was mm. this um, great scene in Seinfeld where Elaine told Jerry that she'd been fake, 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 faking it for years. <laughs> I mean, is there ever a good time to sort of fess up? Um, I don't think it's probably going to do either of you any good to just say, actually, honey, you know, for the last 20 years I've been faking it. I think you're much better off. Just, just again, just say something, you know, like, oh, I don't know whether it's the time of the month or maybe I'm getting older or after children something's shifted. And then just say, you know, can we try it this way? Could yeah. you do this a little bit more? Instead of saying what you like less of in bed, always say what you'd like more of in bed. That, that works. I mean, it's, it's a lot less threatening. Mm -hmm. All right. I'd like to say that uh, you'll find Dr. Cox at Sexpo, but I think that's not going to sound right. So, Tracy, we thank you for your time this morning. <laughs> no problem. And thanks. I certainly hope... Thank you, Tracy. ...that my grandmother and her friends at the nursing home weren't watching that. Hello, Nana. Hi, Nana. At Montefiore. Hope you're having a great day. <laughs> Just ahead. The new plan to keep teen parents in high school. Uh, but first, here's Kaz, our resident Mrs. Fixit.